Hello guys, this is Kyleth, and today we're not going to be doing anything uh, really, well we're not going to be really making anything in this episode, more I'm going to be explaining something that I use which has helped me with a lot of my projects, and that is, as you hopefully can see, these these drawings and okay first of all why are they helpful well they're helpful in the way or in the sense that you see the measurements for uh, needed for every part for example this spot is supposed to be 36 millimeters uh, the entire height of it is 66 millimeters, and so on and so forth. Now, of course, nowadays these are all done mostly in 3D modeling programs like SolidWorks. However, those programs can be very expensive. I think SolidWorks for a year with everything uh, added, like all of the add-ons and everything, is around 10,000 uh, euros or, or maybe even dollars, I don't know. Very expensive, meant for companies, big companies. If you're doing something like me, who is just working in his garage, uh, and you're making stuff that's not very viable, you don't have the cash likely for that. However, there is then the solution to do it, either to find a free program, which I'm certain there are free programs out there, or ones that just don't cost much, or to do it on paper. And I ought to do the latter of those two. And as you can see here, I have labeled the uh, name up here of the project than what the part is. Now, how I do it is definitely not how you do it in industry. There are so many more things that you do in industry to have things standardized and whatnot. This is more just for, on a hobby scale, how to do it, you know, how, how to at least have it make sense and for it to not take forever and for uh, to have you study a million things because that's just not really necessary on a hobby scale unless you're giving these to someone to produce. In that case, you may want to look into that. However, I tend to do it this way, which is a mix of what I've learned in my time at school as well as a few things that I just do for my own convenience. Now, this, first of all, paper. It's very important. Um, I prefer graphing paper, of course. It makes a lot of things easier, you know. You have 90 degrees here. This is all straight, whatnot. And uh, whatnot. If you're working in metric, especially, these, this paper is not something I don't think you can get here in the United States. Every one of these boxes is a half centimeter by half centimeter. And I can even measure that quickly. Yeah, half centimeter by half centimeter, five millimeters. Makes working metric a lot easier. Of course, there is graphing paper that you can get here in the United States, which is, I think, between six and seven millimeters, which isn't really helpful. Maybe in, um, maybe an inch, because maybe it's half an inch, each one of those boxes. No, actually, that doesn't make sense. Maybe, nah, it doesn't matter. This is what I use. <laughs> and, um, depending on what system you use, either metric or imperial, 
you can pick the paper that works for you. So now to get it now eh, now to getting to the drawings themselves. Um, you can see hopefully down here is the scale of this and this part is one to one which means that every measurement here is exactly what it says right here for example this right here this width is two millimeters uh, this is two millimeters as stated up here you can also work in one uh, scale of one half which for larger parts is definitely viable. Um, do I have something like that? I have a few of these. Uh, here, scale one to two. And this part here is in length 200 millimeters. Of course, I can't fit 200 millimeters on this paper. It's only, I think, um, uh, I actually don't know. Doesn't matter. Um, obviously, I can't fit 200 millimeters on this paper, so I go to, I write the scale down here, one to two, and then just do 10 uh, centimeters up here, 100 millimeters, but write 200 millimeters. And, okay. Then, um, yeah. So, basically, these drawings are done as if you were just looking at the part from one side. It's totally two-dimensional. There's nothing three-dimensional here, even though there's this, and we'll get to that later. Um, basically, you have to imagine this a bit in your brain, but or in your mind, whatever. But once it's on paper, it starts to form itself, I believe. And a lot of these measurements are just picked randomly. And then you just follow those measurements throughout. Like if, um, let's see, this measurement is 30 millimeters. That means this one has to be two because this is the same part or not the same part, but um, where's actually the piece? Um, this right here. Hopefully you can see that. This right here has a total width. This. Total width of 30 millimeters because that part goes into right here. That's a dovetail joint. And so this has to be, also be 30 millimeters, obviously. Otherwise they wouldn't fit. Um, let's see what else is there. Um, the scale. Sometimes I sign down here, but that's just because I feel like it. If this is just you know, a hobby thing, it's not really necessary. Um, everything 2D, and you want things in as many, um, or viewed from as many sides as possible. Um, so that you know every measurement, or at least every side that's relevant. For example, if you have, here's the top plate, uh, or a front plate for our next project. I'm viewing that from the front, here the side, and that's it. Why? Because that's all I need. I know the thickness of it, which is going to be the thickness of the board I use. So, this thick, so I think that's seven millimeters, eight millimeters. I don't know. I use eight millimeters in the drawings because you can clean it up afterwards anyway. Um, yeah, but every, like, if you looked at it from the bottom, you would see it from the bottom, but just like a few lines, the thickness doesn't really matter. At least personally. If you want to draw it, that's up to you. Um, yeah, you basically just draw whatever you see. Um, and let's see. Um, 
sometimes I like to draw them like this, where this is from the front, this is the side, and you have these two lines to show that. And down here, this is from the this side, the bottom, and you have the two lines to see it, show that these two are equal. Um, I also use those dotted lines if the measurements become a bit uh, blurred. Like if there's so many measurements on a single piece, I'll use those dotted lines to show what lines those correspond to. And yeah, that's. I think that is also done in industry, but maybe in a different way. I know they use different uh, pencil thicknesses. So, but this is all done with one pencil thickness. Personally, that's fine. And uh, yeah, okay. So I hope that's pretty clear. And now to the single 3D thing. Or what looks to be 3D, of course. This right here is an isometric view. Um, you can look that up. If I remember, I'll spell it out here in the video. But it's called isometric. And if I remember right, <laughs> means that all things in the drawing are of equal scale. Not entirely certain on that. Anyway, there are a few different um, drawing methods of how you do it in 3D. I prefer isometric because it's just... Um, yeah, if you have a point here, this is where I started, and then you have two lines going here. These are 45 degrees to this line right here, or a line that you choose. And then the straight lines are, of course, um, vertical to that line. And it's just a very easy way of doing that. And all dimensions here are exactly the same. There's no... Um, I think in one, it's one half on one side, or and one, like, uh, the scale is one half on one side, where, whereas it's one on the other. I'm not entirely certain on that. But that's why I prefer this one. And sometimes it's nice to have this drawing, especially when you're starting out in drawing it. Drawing this first, seeing how it looks. Um, this is done in one half, but you can approximately see how large it's going to be, um, how it's going to look if it if you want to change things, and then you can go from there into the two D drawings and just start drawing. Um, let's see, on this one I actually did uh, label it front, bottom, like this is the front piece, this is the bottom, or the bottom of, bottom view of that, front view of that. Um, here's one where I actually did the dotted lines to show that I meant this line. Um, besides that, there isn't much to it. It's a fairly simple way of doing things, I find. Um, of course, not an industrial standard by any means. It's more for someone who does this as a hobby, which is completely, if you can, if you can read it, is completely fine. So, I hope this video was informative and helped you understand how I do things, which I in turn hope helps you do things on your own. So, this has been Kyla, and I'll see you in the next video.